Hey, welcome back to Plug and Play EV. I'm Steve, and today we have something a little bit different. We'll be looking at the next level up, if you like, certainly in terms of ride height, when we jump into a launch edition Rivian R1T and see how it feels driving the first all-electric truck. Let's jump in and go for a drive. So, once you get your vehicle, your name will kind of be right here where it says factory. Mm -hmm. We'll press that. We'll press steering wheel. Now, with the steering wheel, you have those scroll bars on the steering okay. wheel. Okay. And that'll kind of get your steering wheel together and kind of get it comfortable for you to go drive comfortably. Right side's height, left side's reach. Gotcha. Very nice. nice. And we'll do the same thing with the side mirrors. Mm -hmm. You'll have, use those scroll bars. And also with those scroll bars, you'll have the left and right directional pads. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So once you get your vehicle, you would hit remember. And it will remember when your phone enters the vehicle, it'll remember your seat height adjustment, your steering wheel height adjustment, and the side. To your right is your drive stock. While holding down on the brake, pressing down on the drive stock puts us in drive. Okay. Yep. You can go to like get to about 20 miles per hour going down here, and then just let it let go of the throttle. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's complete stop. Yes, it'll come to a okay. complete stop. Gotcha. Yep. And the brake lights are on as I. Absolutely. Okay. So the Rivian has two levels of the regenerative brake. It has the high, which we're in now, and it also has the standard. So I want you to get a feel for standard pulling up to the stop sign, right? Mm -hmm. Standard is obviously less aggressive. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's still pretty. It's still pretty strong, right? Right. So there's obviously radars and Yep, got the radars in front of you. Yep. If you hold down the left directional, now you'll see it changes from battery efficiency in front of you okay. to the GPS, to the uh, tires, P, uh, PSI. So you can see the pressure in the tires directions and your uh, driving efficiency. Now, Steve, I got you in all-purpose mode. Mm -hmm. It's our standard daily driver mode, four-wheel drive, soft suspension. Kind of keeps you at a standard ride height, usually. Um, standard to high. The faster you go, it'll drop you a little, little bit lower, uh, making you a little bit more aerodynamic, give you that control back in the, the steering wheel and everything. So I want you to get a feel for a couple different driving modes. We'll, we'll do the top three. We'll do all-purpose, which we're in now. We'll do sport and then we'll do conserve as well. Peripheral vision, yeah. Yep. You're zero to sixty in about three seconds. All right. Yeah. So this is cool for a truck, right? Oh yeah, right. Have you had many like gas truck drivers come and take a look and just blow their minds? Yes, I actually had this guy. He had like this super duty F two fifty with seven hundred and forty something horsepower. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sure it's not as fast as the Rivian. Rivian is 800 plus horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, a strong, super quick vehicle. I want you to feel for that in sport mode, so I'll jump you in there now, right? So in sport mode, it drops us to our lowest ride height, mm -hmm. right? 9.5 inches, right? Yeah. You can feel that throttle is a little bit more sensitive. Yeah. That steering wheel is tighter because the suspension is stiffened up, mm -hmm. right? Making this more aerodynamic, like I said, making that, that handling, that turning easier in the vehicle when you're going at a higher speed. Right? Test out that speed. Nice. Yeah, okay. yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> you got to hold yourself back. Exactly, so exactly. No yeah. problem with it. <laughs> it's just nuts that something this big can do that. Yeah, for a 7,000 plus pound, plus pound vehicle, it's, it shouldn't be moving this quick. Yeah. Go ahead and give it a good kick jumping on this ramp right here. We'll just get yeah, right here. Right? <laughs> it's almost like a Cedar Point ride. Like, a roller coaster ride. Yep. You really got to hold yourself back. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can, you know, so the acceleration is obviously a benefit of EVs. It's something we've got used to, but it's something that takes to another level. Once you're in something the size of a truck where you're up higher, you have that weight around you and the, the size of the vehicle is that much uh, bigger. It's, it's uh, an extremely fast vehicle and it just takes it to the next level. Night and day difference between an all electric drivetrain and the kind of cumbersome waiting for something to happen that uh, is trying to move all that weight in a gas truck. If I'm driving this around a city, and my, if I'm at a stoplight, they'll like roll down the window. Like, what yeah. is that? Yeah. It's beautiful. It's like, especially the front end, that, those lights are kind of the identity, mm -hmm. right? So the front end is awesome. The vehicle inside is like, 
the outdoors, the adventure, like you say. Absolutely, um, absolutely. I love those little touches. Like, I just like let the product speak for let itself. Let the product the speak for itself. Absolutely. And like so many people will know about Rivian. So conserve mode cuts. What it does is cuts off two of the four back, or excuse me, two of the four motors mm -hmm. in the vehicle, making it two wheel drive instead of four wheel drive. Right. So you're using less energy. Yeah. So this drive mode, we kind of recommend you use it only if you're going on long road trips. Um, if you have a super long commute to work or you know back and forth or anything like that, mm -hmm. or if you're low on mileage, right? Um, the only reason we don't say use this on a daily basis is because the two wheel drives is the front is the front wheel drive, right? Mm -hmm. So that front wheel drive will continue to go and it'll start to wear down the tires quickly, okay. right? So, so you want that all purpose four mode, four wheel drive, kind of distributing that you know that friction of, amongst all of the tires. Okay. okay. And I was, didn't notice, is it changing my range when I move between the more Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a good deal of pickup in, even in this. Oh yeah. You know, it's not like it's slouching or anything. Definitely, you'll, you'll, you'll smoke that. The top speed on this is about 110 miles per hour, mm -hmm. electronically governed, so you can't go any faster than that. Um, very nice. And you can just park it, you'll, you'll face it towards one of those charger ports. I'll, okay. I'll probably charge it. You got the aerial view, and then yeah. you got this okay, kind of backward view. So is there, I'm not that I would tow, because I don't have anything, but is there um, the towing hitch? assistance? Yeah, kind of, you know, what will it tow, how? Um, so it tows up to about 11,000 pounds. Okay. Payload's a little over 1,700, right? Okay. Um, there's a hitch back there, and there obviously you, go, you, you can use this camera to kind of see back mm -hmm. there with the hitch, but yep. you can also toggle between the side views to kind of keep your, an eye on that trailer or whatever you're towing, right? right. You got pet mode right here, right? Mm -hmm. So to kind of keep your pet comfortable while you're outside of the vehicle. Heated seats in the front, cooled seats in the front, heated seats only in the back, okay. right? You also have in the adventure package and the launch edition, you have the heated steering wheel. We hit our lightning bolt. Zooming out like this will show you the different chargers. So all these numbers right here are different chargers. Okay. And you'll just hit one number and it'll show you where that charger's at. So by hitting that number, give it some time for the internet to work, right? You can see the kilowatts right. that that charger's putting out, how many chargers are there and are available, right? Uh, we got the charger port. You mm -hmm. see these three lines right yep. here? Go ahead and swipe your finger on those three lines and you can access the charger port, Nice. right? So we got the level one uh -huh. and level two charger port exposed right there. And when you drop down this flap, that'll expose the DC fast charger right. port, right? Got the front trunk right here. Mm -hmm. Three ways to access this front trunk. You can access this from the interface on the inside. You can hit the button that's always to the left of the emblem down okay. here. Or you could use the carabiner key. Double tap in that front mm -hmm. trunk button. Opens it's automatically, okay. closes automatically. Nice. Right? Tons of space. You got 11.1 .1 cubic feet of space in here mm -hmm. with this false floor that you can fold down gotcha. and or fold up to give you even more space. Uh -huh. right? You got a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet right there. Emergency release button right here. And this goes for all the storage spaces in the vehicle. Do you access anything else under here? Or is it all bringing in for technicians, that kind of thing? So there is a drain release valve. Okay. For this, yeah, this would be the area for technicians. They could lift out this right. trunk as you can expose all the different wire components yeah, right here. It's... In here, you got the level one and level two chargers that come standard with each Rivian, mm -hmm. okay? So up and kind of show you right so this is a basic outlet uh level one mm -hmm. charger this will give you anywhere like it's just about three miles per hour of charge, right right uh, um this is the 1450 outlet uh level two charger mm -hmm. this will give you about 16 miles per hour charge okay. anywhere between 16 and 20 miles per so hour overnight. charge this is a better option if you're kind of at a camping site um you could also get this outlet installed in your garage mm -hmm. in your home so these come standard with the rivian mm -hmm. So like I said, hitting this carabiner key twice, mm -hmm. it drops that, and I'll leave the charger port open. That closes automatically after two minutes of being open. Okay. Um, and there's also a way to close it and open it in the interface. We have your gear tunnel. One of the most famous pieces yeah. or nice. areas on the R1T. To access that gear tunnel, you'll hit that button. Go ahead, that button right there, yep. So it unlocks it, now mm -hmm. you can pull it down manually. Yep. I hit that, yep. yep. Sometimes it re-engages because you can open that from the front as well, mm -hmm. or the inside. Um, and you don't want so that's going to be like while you're driving, right? It fit tents and yeah. eleven point seven cubic feet of space in there. Okay, has a small light in there as well. Yeah, um, that same emergency releases in there. 
you have a 110 volt outlet right here, just like you nice. see in the home. Okay. Right? On the opposite end, you have a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet. The doors on the gear tunnel, they hold about 250 pounds. Okay. Um, so you can stand on that gear tunnel door, access the tailgate, mm -hmm. wipe down the hood if you need be. Right? Gotcha. Also, each of the gear tunnel doors has this extra compartment space where this side has the first aid kit. Mm -hmm. And the other side has an air compressor hose that is long enough to reach each of the tires nice. if they come flat, right? Okay. So that's a kind of cool little secret compartment. Well, people are using that for like uh, off-roading, let the tires down a little bit, do their thing, and yep. then yep. pump yep. them up at the end. Yep, gotcha. yep. That's exactly what they use. Sweet. And also, like, if you have any gear you want to blow up, a beach ball for me, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. that, right? <laughs> the kids' side of things. Yeah. <laughs> so back here, we got the tailgate. You got the tunnel cover. Mm -hmm. You got the tailgate. These two buttons right here access the tunnel cover and tailgate. Okay. I'll let you give those a whirl. The top button opens that automatic cover. There are there is other options for the tonneau cover. You have that option, and you also have the manual option where you can just kind of pull that string and close that. Okay. Right? I think the automatic option is really cool. So yep. Also, two ways, three ways to access this tailgate <coughs> interface. That button, and also on the carabiner key, mm -hmm. there is a tailgate opening button. Right on this side of the tailgate, you have two 120 volt outlets. Right. Mm -hmm. You can cut these on and off from the interface inside. Right above that, another emergency release button. Okay. On that side there, oh, wow. you have the air compressor, right? Yeah. So with the hose attached, it gets roughly about 150 PSI. Um, beneath that is the gear guard cable. It's basically almost like a bike lock, right? Where if you have any gear, a suitcase, a golf bag, um, anything you kind of want to protect while you're away from the vehicle, you would take one side out, put that gear between the cord, plug that side in, lock the vehicle, and mm -hmm. once that vehicle's locked, that cord is locked into place. Okay. It can't be removed, Correct. right? This will access the stair, spare tire space, right? Mm -hmm. So this the spare tire will be something you add to your configuration. Um, it is a real tire, not a donut. Um, a cool thing about this space, if you decide not to get the, uh, you know, the tire, it has a better drain release valve. This okay. is where we really recommend if you wanted to turn it into a cooler, mm -hmm. you would use this space. That, okay. that valve drains a lot quicker than the valve up front and the mm -hmm. front, right? A lot of people don't know that. You gotta decide between booze or a tire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How likely is the emergency? Right. <laughs> and so that is the tailgate. So everything's been pretty designed with off-roading. Yeah, so camping say, purposes. Okay. Kind of adventurous, you know? Yeah, you exactly like the brand, gotcha. Sure other gear tunnel door right so i'll unlock that for you and pull it down so that 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet yep. right there on that side and then here you have the compressor hose right mm -hmm. like i said that compressor hose is long Do enough to reach it. each of the tires and what kind of uh, tires is it riding on these are the scorpion 20 inch all-terrain tires okay right two usb-c outlets each of the headrests has one as well. So you have one right here okay. and one right there on the headrest. Even more storage space in the back. So you'll have storage space from here to there. I'll go on the other side and kind of show you that mm -hmm. other seat really quick. This is the launch edition vehicle, right? Okay. It's the launch edition. So it has the Meridian sound system. Mm -hmm. In here is this 10 inch subwoofer that comes with that Meridian gotcha. sound system. So you have this storage space and you mm -hmm. also have this sound system nice. right here as well. It's a good size. It's a couple right? of backpacks right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So. So it's hard to really see too many downsides with the R1T. I mean, we're not truck people, so it won't be our vehicle of choice, but if you are looking and have been waiting for that truck and it's in your price range, it's gonna be a really compelling vehicle. The reviews are stellar so far. R1S is coming as well. Hopefully we'll get a chance to drive that out in Ohio sometime fairly soon. Um, so they're starting up to a really uh, solid brand here. In terms of downsides, it's really hard to think of uh, too many. I mean, you could say the uh, drive and the ride quality was a little bit uh, tight and stiff, but at the same time, that's the kind of vehicle you're getting into. Um, the connectivity on the map seemed a little bit wonky at times, but could have been where we were, the location could have just been uh, an off day or the software would have been updated after that. So you really would have to be in longer to uh, to test that fully. 
Um, it's really hard to think of downsides, honestly. It's such a practical vehicle, so many uses. Um, the bed is obviously quite small. If you're looking at something like a work truck or uh, something that's going to haul a lot of stuff, maybe something like uh, an F-150 Lightning would be more of a um, worker, daily driver, that kind of thing. Um, same with the Chevy Silverado EV. We have to kind of see those trucks coming out and then compare everything like for like. But the truck market is so big that uh, there's space for a bunch of these. And, you know, the more all electric trucks we can get out there on the road, the better. So, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, let us know what you think of the Rivian R1T down in the comments. R1S as well coming up. Would that be your vehicle of choice if money were no object? And, uh, yeah, excited to see the next ones come out and see how Rivian takes this into 2023. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.